Maybe I'm um, because I didn't. Uh, oh my. You fuck! You dropkick Wombat! California. Such a terrible place, such a terrible place, such a grindy place. Plenty of doom at the Hotel Gals in California. I can't sing. Any time of year, any time of year, you can find it here. Welcome to the Hotel Gals in California. Fucking a terrible place right here. G'day, I'm Ash. Welcome yourselves back to War Thunder. Today we're checking out the last gunfighter, F8U-2. Now, unfortunately, it isn't the French export version with magic. So that'd be fantastic. One day, please. But this thing is a fantastic aircraft. Or at least, initially, it's a fantastic aircraft. And I invert commas on that one because I've seen a lot of people ask me how to fly this thing. How do you fly this thing? Think between a cross between a G91YS and an F104 and you have basically the perfect playstyle for the thing. That being said though, I'm far from a perfect pilot. I spent the last 12 hours on and off playing this thing consistently to try and get decent matches to show you. Yeah, no. One to two kill games at most and this thing rips its wings like no other machine. It's got the same issue as the A4. That being said though, it can be, you know, overcome, and it sits directly below the F3H. Uh, but again, I don't know, this thing is lacking to me. Maybe it's the fact that it doesn't have countermeasures at all. But it does have one very interesting trick up its sleeve. That being that it has, you know, these rockets that appear out of the bomb bay underneath. And I'll show you that right here. Now, it's really funky, because it just comes out in a drawer. Like, watch this. Blip. You don't expect that at all. And they do fire a little bit lower, so you do have to aim a bit. And now, I will miss these shots here, even on a stationary target. But even trying to get head-ons is incredibly risky with this particular machine. Even with the 32 rounds, you fire 16 at once. So you only have two chances, and well, I've completely screwed up. So, there you go. And, I mean, this thing's got an afterburner, and it's got four missiles. There isn't really much else to say, aside from the mic goes boom face. And we'll get into some gameplay here and I'll talk a little bit more about how the aircraft performs in general. Get into business, we're going to show you straight away what happens if you don't necessarily pay attention. That being said though, it is a defensive fighter. And for being a US Navy aircraft, being a carrier based day fighter, it didn't need to be capable of fighting and shooting down other aircraft in low visibility conditions. Cloud at night and turned out to be one of the last pure gunfighters in the US Navy. Anyway, we've got a Mirage and a Jaguar and another Mirage down here. Mirages are probably the bane of your existence, that and F5s. I covered that in a video you can see up above. As you see here coming in, I've overloaded my Gs. Doesn't necessarily matter, the Mirage is completely and utterly gone. The Colts, while being four 20mm cannons, aren't exactly the greatest anyway. Now, the old trick, pull up, look at the face. But we've got missiles in, and this is where we become a bit of a defensive flyer. Missed one from the other Mirage, and we've got another MiG-21 coming in, and obviously a Jaguar as you can see, I'm trying to avoid them as much as possible. Mirage fires another missile. We're going to try and out-avoid this one. And this is where this aircraft's strength relies. It does rip its wings quite consistently, though. So, unfortunately for me, this doesn't end too well as I go ahead on with the Jaguar once I figured out that there was uh, missiles aboard this particular machine. But this can hold 8Gs, 9Gs comfortably in a turn. But just watch, because the, the way that the wings are set up, you can see here, I thought I'd be able to get a kill on him. No, got pilot sniped. 
And while the rockets w proved not only to be not effective as an area suppression weapon due to inaccuracy, but also downright dangerous, it's fair to say that in War Thunder you probably only use it as a bit of a meme. Now, fired off a missile at the Yak-38, he is dead. Now, this MiG-21 is going to get one as well. Now, the aircraft in itself is probably going to be pretty interesting. As I said, the, the rockets in the bottom of this machine are probably only going to be limited to that of a support role or a bit of a meme machine in War Thunder. But when you get the guns on... It's a very effective fighter. There you go, three kills in one match. Unfortunately, I ran out of fuel and I have to land it back at base. But aside from the low fuel load, this thing does burn through fuel incredibly quickly. Now we're going to showcase another clip of me doing a defensive flying. And we've just climbed up. We're getting up there. We're just keeping some altitude. We're keeping the targets ahead of us. I like to fly this thing like a G91YS. It's got the maneuverability to do so. But obviously you have to be careful about the wing ripping because that is a prevalent issue in this thing. Anything over 3 or 4 Gs can sometimes net in a, in, a, in a bad particular position. Fox 2 on that MiG-21. We're going to roll directly over and we're going to go down south. There is an FG-1 uh, here, which we're probably going to just end up by gun running. Unfortunately, I have no concept of aim. And we can only basically get a critical hit on this FG-1. That's okay, though, because here's where the important step happens. We've engaged, we've dived, we've got to get out of there. And this is what we do. We go straight up, vertical. There is an MF behind us. We're not necessarily too worried about that MiG-21. He will fire a couple of missiles, but, you know, <laughs> at the angle that he's at, he's not necessarily going to get a RAND for that. And this is what this thing does. Excessive defensive flying, this thing is. I love it in that regard. But other than that, it is a piece of junk, this machine. And it's just a strange one. As you can see here, they're still directly on my 6. The MF is coming into play. I'm sort of defensively wiggling around, make sure I maintain my speed when the FG-1 decides it's a good idea to come head on with me. Don't know about you, when you're stalling out for a cr Crusader, yeah, not a good look, I can tell you that much. Even though I don't win this engagement in the long run, the end point is, don't go head on with our aircraft, and you'll see why exactly in a second here. People trying to head on me, trying to shoot me down, they're all just going for the full limbing drain. Unfortunately, I get in a rush of shit to the brain and go head on with an F5. This can only end too well. Pronto. In the next clip, you're just going to see what happens when you line things up correctly. There's a Yak-38 in front of me here. Now, I would cook a missile up, but he's not necessarily in the right position. But he is stalling out, and I can't just walk my guns directly onto his airframe. Goodbye, Yak-38. Next is an SU-7. We can lock on him. Maybe we'll lock on the other SU-7. I mean, SU-7s, SU-17s, I blame Smiggle for the rush of SU-7s recently. <laughs> they tend to be everywhere right now. And obviously, rushing your spawn as you particularly take off or whatever, provided you have a decent aircraft to combat it, can be utterly great fun. Here we go again. No, we get a miss entirely. Now, we've got to play on the defensive as everybody comes out of the sky. So I'm just going to pull up gently, keep our speed. There's an F5 directly behind us there. Nothing too in, in danger yet. Who knows? What might there be? But anyway, the... Such to the effect was that, that they removed the Zuni rockets from the thing, as if you fired one rack, what had happened is it might have a chance to jam, and the previous rocket would just be left there burning on top of the other rack, which hadn't fired. So yeah, massive fire hazard. Not only that, it also blocked the landing gear, so you wouldn't be able to land correctly. Anyway... There goes an aircraft, and that's two aircraft down in one second, basically. Goodbye, Senyang, and the SU-7. Now, I've got to play it a little bit smart. Had I had looked behind me right about now and had situational awareness, it was too little too late there. You need to pay attention to this aircraft. It's incredibly important. This thing doesn't do well in certain scenarios. That was one of them. Come out of getting two kills, you need to maintain your speed, your energy, and your wits, because this is... An emotionally barring particular aircraft. Anyway, next match, same map again. Now, this time, it's more defensive flying. This tends to be a trait here. It's easy to avoid a missile, it's harder to shoot things down, and I find that getting one to two kills in this thing is about the average for what you will achieve with the aircraft's limitations. Now, that MiG-21 has fired two missiles at me so far. I barely missed that one, I do actually take some damage. The F-21 gives it another go. He fires one, then he fires his second one, and then he fires his third. I don't know. Maybe is he going to win the lottery? It's beginning to feel a little bit like Ace Combat 7 in here. Unfortunately, that FG-1 does manage to pick me off. Case in point, when this missile, I try and avoid it. 
There is no way I'm avoiding that one. There you go. Proximity effect, I suppose. Now this aircraft is something of a dream. In one hand, it is perfect at doing everything you want. On the other hand, this thing just struggles, and it is a bit of a struggle bus emotionally. It's one of those aircraft where you find yourself doing well in good matches, and you find yourself getting three kills and then you rip your wings, or you end up by going to get four kills. And the max I have had currently is four kills as of current. But that doesn't necessarily stop me. We're going to show off the last match here with a four kill match. We've taken off, we've kept altitude, and we've kept speed. That is important. Those two things are your, your bread and butter in this machine. And again, treating it like a 104, pulling directly up and then rolling over. This tends to be the best way to maneuver this thing without having to use too much of the ailerons, which are good in rolls, but not necessarily good at maneuvering and turning the aircraft around on your enemies, like, for example, a Mirage. Not that it has many things to do. I was told once of a story of this aircraft taking off from a carrier with its wingtips still folded up and still being able to maneuver pretty well. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened to that. There was a website detailing a story in which that happened. Though, in War Thunder, there's no real reason for the wingtips to be folded up. You're not necessarily taking off from a carrier all the time. Having said that, it'd be a nice feature to have just for cinematic purposes, even for that, but Again, a limited control for something that is quite annoying at best. Now, as you can see, there is a fail platoon. A Focke-Wulf 190, a Seal 13, etc, etc. And what we're going to do is we're just going to fly up. That's all we're going to do. Outrun, out-accelerate. That is the anti enemy's anti-air sort of opening up. Their base is just there. Seal 13 and a bunch of other things just directly that way. And we're just going to coast it around. As you can see, it's a typical gameplay plan. Outrun your enemy fly around, re-engage, disengage, and then try and get a couple of kills, or at least something. Now, that Fock Wolf 190 is actually starting to annoy me. We'll come back and deal with him later, but meantime, we have an F5 to deal with, and hopefully we can get guns on. We've only got zero anti-airs left. If I hadn't have screwed up that missile run on the first aircraft that I necessarily engaged, then we'd have an extra missile to play around with. But in the meantime... I have to pretend like that F1W190 is an OV-10 Bronco, or maybe maybe one of those war Cessnas aimed with, you know, Zunis or whatever. And we're going to go back around and see if we can kill that F5. Well, the F5 is completely, utterly dead, so, you know, this time, kill the kid. I'm sorry, Fuck Wolf 190, but your time has come. Your time is here. Your time is now. It is time for you to see your maker. My dude, he has no idea that I'm coming this direction. Hopefully, he doesn't get too hard uh, feelings right here. He tries to turn away, but this thing, you know, once you're at that kind of maneuverability, there's nothing stopping you. All right, there's one aircraft left that we can possibly shoot. Got to look around me, just double check. What are we going to shoot? We're going to shoot that Jaguar. Yeah, let's kill the Jaguar. Why not? We're going to go head on with the Jaguar. Probably. Probably a terrible idea as well. Gun run. Kill the aircraft, unfortunately, he clips my tail and that stalls my aircraft out, causing a wing overload crash. He gets the kill, and we go back to hangar. So while this aircraft is incredibly effective as a ground attacker, incredibly effective as a daytime fighter, it's a limited use aircraft in a way. I find it incredibly easy to use as a defensive fighter, and as a team support or as a baiting aircraft, it's got decent acceleration, it has a fantastic top speed. I, I just can't get this thing to work. I don't know whether it's just me or I'm just trying too hard, but this thing for me is a bit of a novelty and I'll continue to play it and I'll continue to strive to try and do better in this thing. But in the meantime, that's all I got for you. All right, stay tuned on the channel when we will probably take a look at the Su-17 or maybe one of the other jets, who knows? All right, my name is Ash. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, all that other stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one soon, hey? Alright, cheerio!